Hello and welcome back to the Six Masters here, the national tournament for the Oceanic region. I'm Dev, Raven, we're back at it for another night. I'm super keen. We got some awesome matches as well. How are you feeling about it? I am also super keen. Uh, last night was nothing short of a banger. We had two eight sevens, which is, of course, as long as you can get the match to go. Uh, so I have high expectations for tonight as well. Yeah, oh, last night was a road trip that I just could not escape from. It went so long, and those 8 sevens were super exciting, and we were lucky that both of those final rounds of those games just were so good. A lot of those are clipped and highlighted if you want to head over to the Rainbow Six ANZ Twitter, uh, Instagram, Facebook. We got all those channels, lots of stuff under there you can keep up to date with. I highly recommend it. Whether you're watching here on the Rainbow Six global channels or the Australian New Zealand channels, doesn't matter. We got you covered. And we've got some more matches up tonight. So we have this uh, round robin system. We've got eight teams playing. We saw four of them play last night. And today we've got the next four. And uh, I've got to say, we've got some of the top teams and also some of those hot up and coming contenders as well. It should be good. Yeah, it's a great mixture. And I'm sure most people are going to be, of course, most anticipating the Elevate and Wildcard matches. So they are the ones that are playing tonight. Uh, and I mean, especially Elevate, they've got something to really fight back for this week. Definitely after their performance last week. Now let's dive into the standings and have a look at where these teams have fallen so far after three play days worth of matches. Elevate, as you mentioned, this is where they sat coming into um, the season in terms of the top on the standings. But um, we've actually got some, some issues here. These are not the correct standings. So uh, yeah, I don't know what happened there. <laughs> Yeah, well, well, don't, don't, don't worry about that. Please, <laughs> please ignore. That's just that's just a little uh, something that I was working on before in paint before the show, um, uh, just for a bit of man, fun. You've got great paint skills if that's the case. Oh yeah, uh, all of the all of these uh, like all, all these graphics and everything. Like, I did those, you know, <laughs> in paint. Oh like, yeah, okay. Totally. See, I thought Pengu was the paint master, but apparently it's you all along. Like, I, I, I don't want to um, go on about this too much because people are going to realize and they're going to call me out and my ball. So, no, never mind about that. We will get to the standings in a minute. Don't worry about that stuff. But, yeah, let's keep talking about what we were, which was Elevate. They're playing tonight. So let's maybe touch on a bit of kind of their history coming into um, the season and their expectations and then how they went last week, which was a bit of a, a surprise, I suppose. Yeah, well, the big thing for them was finishing second in the ANZ Pro League, just narrowly behind Fnatic, just a matter of a couple of points. So they had a great... Pro League season, which really only finished a month ago. And coming to Six Masters, they were the first seed, as Fnatic hasn't accepted their invite to Six Masters. Mm. And they actually really came up short against LFO. They had a good, strong first map, but in that second one, wow, LFO just ran over the top of them. And that was to the surprise of a lot of people. Yeah, so there is a lot of expectation on Elevate um, and maybe LFO now. Let's have a look at how the standings have shaped up. This is the right one, I promise you, this time. So we've got TBD sitting at the top. These guys managed to secure top four in the Pro League, and this is kind of, we expect them to be on that top half, but they have played more matches than Wildcard, uh, who's just beneath them. So you'll notice there, half of these teams have played four matches, the other half just two. Um, kind of give me some expectations. I've come into this season, we talked last night about how we expect this to shake up and, and kind of what's the teams to watch out for. Yeah, well, at the moment, it's showing that LFO and Sinister are probably the more dark horsey teams, you could say, to break into that top four. Sinister have had really great form, and so have LFO, because LFO have taken maps off the top two teams, essentially, coming into this, being Elevate and TBD. So keep an eye on them in future weeks, but of course, those teams as well that have dropped the maps, they're going to be wanting some retribution. They're not meeting their expectations for everybody as well as themselves. So yeah, especially Elevate tonight, uh, they're going to be really wanting to earn back some of that cred. Yeah, I mean, it's a bit surprising seeing them in six at the moment, but let's talk about the matches we've got on tonight. Elevate will be playing up first against Kanga Esports, and then we've got Ferox versus Wildcard. Um, and like we were kind of reiterating before, these are the, some of the top teams, Elevate and Wildcard, versus some of the teams that we're hoping have an opportunity to prove them wrong. Yeah, and Kanga is a, an interesting story as well because they started so well in ANZ Pro League Season 11. They had a draw with Fnatic, they took uh, a map off Wildcard, or they had some great performances against Wildcard as well in general. And then in the second half, it just really dropped off thanks to some unfortunate roster changes on their end, losing Worthy to Elevate and Pat to Wildcard. So this is their chance to really try and bring back some form and also get some retribution, I guess, over Worthy now finally getting to play against him. <laughs> 
Yeah, that's a good point. And also Ferox and Wildcard playing later. Wildcard, you'll know, is their, their team that went to the Invitational. They also made it to the Tokaname Finals way back for last year. Uh, Pro League season, was it 10? 10? Season 10. And uh, they did really well. Uh, they kind of dropped the ball a bit on Invitational. They've been in a bit of a, a rut ever since. Like you said, they made those roster changes. So got expectations of those guys. And then Ferox, their opponents, uh, they used to be called Fury. You might know them under that name. And they've made a few roster changes as well, and they're really out to prove that they can do more than just sit and hang around with the, the bottom of the standings as well. Yeah, that's right. Uh, they traded maps last week, so they have got one map under their belt already, uh, but they're wanting to be proving more. And of course, they have made some pretty dramatic roster changes in general, especially compared to how they started Season 11 of Pro League. So they do have some statements to make, and the best time to make those is against the top teams with that big rep like Wildcard. Yeah, oh, 100%. A lot of opportunity here for Kanga and Ferox tonight to really stick it to the big guys. But also, this is where we expect Elevate and Wildcard to start getting some of those points on the board because I don't think they'll want TBD sitting at the top for very long. And especially when we have teams showing up like Sinister and LFO, maybe some underdogs, um, it really puts those pressure on, on those top teams. So let's talk about Elevate first. Now, Raven, for a really long time, you actually coached this team um, you guys, you've been away from the team for a while now, but these guys, uh, you know them so well, so I feel like you're the best person to give us an introduction. <laughs> yeah, so I have uh, spent a lot of time with these guys, and uh, they are a great team in terms of their mentality. I think that's a really undervalued and important aspect of how they work uh, as a team. And a lot of that comes off the back of Vast as the IGL, the captain, and Red as well is a pretty good hype player. And the newest hype player they've run is actually Digital. Uh, he has really been good for energy on that team and the role that he fills in more of a support role, that's really crucial and that seems to have really lifted them up through their results in Pro League Season 11. That's helped them get to that second place position and hopefully it helps them bounce back here because it's going to be energy and a positive mindset that's going to bring them back into the Six Masters. Mm, yeah, and I mean, losing Geo to Wildcard was pretty scary, but bringing on Worthy, they're pretty happy with how it's gone so far, and these guys are out to prove that they can be the top dog here and secure one of those top spots, if not first in the league. Uh, in contrast, we're going to be seeing Elevate play against Kanga, a team which has been plagued by roster changes, not of their own accord. However, so many of these teams have been snatching their players. Uh, Worthy, who we just mentioned, was taken from this team, and also uh, Pat was uh, taken from this team and, and gone over to Wildcard. But we still see this, this roster, some rejuvenation, and some promise as well. Yeah, they didn't do too bad last week against TBD. They had a very close map on Cafe, end up going overtime 8-6. Uh, so that's the best result that they've had with this lineup since the changes. And there were some really noticeable standouts. For me, it was still Leb. I highlighted him last week as a bit of a massive improver and a bit of an X factor for Kanga. And he had a, a really big clutch that helped them get to overtime. And he continued to really play well for them. So I th would definitely keep an eye out on him. But in general, their team play was starting to tight up a little bit last week. If that can continue, well, then we might start to see some more positive results from these guys. Mm. And we do have players like Campo who are still relatively new to this very top level environment and they're looking to find their feet. I'd love to see young players and new players jump into the scene and do well. Also, every day that we have a Kanga match and we get to chat to Spruce afterwards, that's just a treat for us, for you, for everybody. Spruce is just a blessing on, onto this earth and, and so it's <laughs> so much fun getting to chat to him as well. But expectations coming into this series. We're going to have two maps. It's a best of two. I mean, we, we feel like we're favoring Elevate here, but my question is how heavily? Um, still pretty strongly because, of course, Kanga have also had their issues, and that's much more damning than Elevate's issues have been. Elevate have maybe suffered from the occasional off week. We did see that when they played Wildcard in Pro League Season 11. They really didn't look themselves. There was a lot more communication issues and just lack of coordination than you'd expect. And that somewhat felt like that last week. On top of the fact that LFO were just playing really well. And traditionally they bounced back really strong. They actually performed really well against Fnatic the week after that wildcard game. So I kind of feel for Kangi here, this is a potential, you know, chance for Elevate to step back up. 
So we know Kanga can come back from deficits. They didn't get a single kill first three rounds last week against TBD, and they came up and almost won the map. They lost at 8-6. Let's talk about where we'll be playing tonight. It's a best of two series, as I alluded to. So each team gets one map ban, and then each team gets one map pick. So rolling on through, let's check it out. Bring up the first two bans. It's Clubhouse for Elevate and Border for Kanga. What are we What are we thinking here? Yeah, Border is probably a good ban from Kanga. It's not actually a map that Elevate have played a lot of, but they played it twice against Fnatic in Season 11 of Pro League. And they won that 7-5 and then lost it 5-7. So that's a pretty mm. big statement as that's also a map that Fnatic has been traditionally strong at. Um, the Clubhouse ban from Elevate I think is good. Kanga seem to play it a lot of. So just take away that comfort and it means that they're choosing from that smaller map pool. Yeah, it, it, the, the Clubhouse ban is an interesting one for me though because you mentioned we've had kind of mixed results from Elevate on that map and Kanga do play it a lot, but my results of Kanga is 0 and 4. Like, they've lost it four times. Mm. Last time these two teams played each other, Elevate 7-1 Kanga on the map. But I guess this just goes to show that um, Elevate is expecting Kanga to have improved and they don't want to take us to that ground. So let's roll through the picks and uh, and see what we get here. Cafe pick for Elevate, Consulate pick for Kanga. All right. Yeah, yeah I... well, Cafe, I think, is a great pick because Kanga showed that they have some pretty big struggles on it last week. That's also a fresh VOD. So, I mean, with a uh, revamp roster from Kanga, mm. for example, a lot of the old VODs from Pro League Season 11 aren't as relevant. So getting something that fresh and being able to counter it uh, nice and quickly could be something that Elevate's trying to play into there as a strength. Yeah, no, I agree here. And look, I've got Cafe down quite a strong map for Elevate. Typically, they beat TBD on it. They've also smashed Ferox on it last season in the Pro League and, and beat Sinister. They did lose it to Wildcard, but we talked about maybe that, that game, Elevate versus Wildcard, bit of an off day, maybe a bit of a write-off. Don't necessarily want to read into Elevate's results too much in that game. Uh, so, um, yeah, it makes sense for, for the, the Cafe pick and then uh, heading afterwards to, uh, sorry, was it Consulate? Yeah, that's it. Um, you know, I said that was a pretty weak map for Kanga. They lost it to Fnatic 7-1 and TBD 4-7. Um, but hey, Elevate also played it just last week um, against LFO and won it. So maybe Kanga's going to VOD that and see if they can get anything out of it. Yeah, it's the same thing like I was talking about with uh, maybe Elevate's thought process on Cafe. Maybe it was the same with Kanga. Fresh VOD, easier to analyze and try and pick to pieces and figure out something else to counter that team. We'll have to wait and see whether they can actually do that. Yeah. All right. Well, let's see what you guys reckon. We're pretty much in the Elevate camp, but we spin up that poll vote that we've got on social media. And yeah, very much reflective of what we were talking about. Yeah. And I'm not too surprised by that. Um, on top of the fact of Elevate's reputation and the way Kang has been playing, uh, I just think also Elevate's a pretty big org. So when these polls go out, you do sometimes see it swing in favor of the orgs that are very well known, very popular. Um, and I think it's fair in, in this instance. Uh, I kind of feel like last week was a bit of an anomaly for Elevate, similar to that wildcard one. This week's going to be the, the prover of that. Um, my hypothesis mm. is that, yeah, off week, it'll be different today. Yeah. So if you guys do want to get involved uh, in this conversation, you can vote on these uh, polls for the, what you think the match is going to be. So head over to the Rainbow Six ANZ Twitter. Also, if you use the hashtag six masters, that's letters six, not the number six, um, you can actually get your tweets featured on stream. If we like them, we might chuck them in the Twitter. We might chuck them up during the breaks as well. So that's always fun. I know my mates are always trying to get themselves on the stream there too. <laughs> so reeling it back in, Elevate. Look, we're, we're feeling 80% uh, to them. I've got to echo that. I feel like Elevate does have this one in the bag, but for me, like, what is the condition? What what kind of situation has to happen for Kanga to get a leg up in this series? Just, I think, well-executed counter strats, because Elevate can play quite structured. They're not really a destructured aggressive team. So I think if they can work in a counter to Elevate and destabilize them a bit, that's going to give them that window of opportunity to try and secure the map. And it's Cafe where we lift off here. Good luck, have fun comes out in the chat. Or fun, have luck, good, according to Spruce. Cheers there, Spruce. Appreciate that one. Ying Band coming out, Dev. So I can see this become more and more common now in Six Masters. A lot of teams just not wanting to deal with it. But also, the Candela is quite helpful for clearing utility. 
So again, that can be uh, a reason to ban it. And this actually means Thatcher is going to be available for this map. Yeah, very uncommon that we see Thatcher allowed through that ban phase, but instead getting rid of that Habana, want something that's a lot more unusually uh, banned. Um, so I'm not sure what the strat is there from Kanga. And I, look, I'm not, I don't actually have the stats on me right now, but I feel like maybe that's a, a common ban for Kanga. Um, I'd have to double check that, but you know, that could hamstring elevate. I know Digital's a very good player on that Hibana, maybe a bit less comfortable on the Thermite if he needs to move over to them. Maybe Red will take off that mantle. Um, we have seen a lot of uh, Maverick being played on this map too. A lot of it yesterday in the LFO TBD game, but of course, without the Thatcher band, you may as well just bring the Thatcher and then maybe you kind of don't, don't want the Maverick so much. Yeah, the Habana ban as well also can create a bit of a trap with hard breach because it means you, have, of course, have to get up close and personal with those walls. So that gives you an opening to be able to counteract that. Uh, whereas Habana, of course, you can shoot it from distance. It's a bit safer. So that could be something they're leaning in with that ban. Defender, Possibility to try and catch these Thermite players off guard. Battery. Interesting that Elevate have chosen to go with this bottom floor bomb type first up instead of going to what most teams will do in uh, that bar cocktail upstairs. But you know, there are three very strong bomb sites on Cafe, so I guess you can't, uh, it's not that unusual. We're gonna see a lineup with uh, a lot of good information gathering, a lot of good wall denial. So we've got the Valkyrie and the Mozzie, both of which can be used for information gathering and wall denial from Vars with the Bandit and the Kaid of Red. But that Thatcher is just going to do a really nice job of clearing all that out, especially those KE charges. Vast might go for a bandit trick, which is typically countered by presence upstairs from the attacking side. Elevate put reinforcements upstairs as well to contest that. Potentially hold that a bit longer. The KE goes outside looking for drones, doesn't find anything, gets back inside nice and safe. There's been a lot of activity on these upper floors as well, so it looks like Elevate might actually try to extend their hold, which isn't quite as common on the kitchen sites. Usually people try to just sit down in that first floor. Maybe they'll shoot some drones and drop down, but either way, it's a good site to sit patiently and disciplined and just draw the other enemy to try and clear the map and be a bit of a trap there. So interesting to see how this roam will play out. Yeah, and in fact, it does look like we're seeing a map clear from Kanga all the way from the top hall, this uh, most commonly approached position from the attacking side. Get in nice and on early. Good droning, very efficient. Wayne and Boats leading the way in that regard with Campo and Leb moving in on the back of that. Leb running along on top of the bar so he's not vulnerable to that C4 and the mozzie of God Legion does shoot away that first drone and back off. Nice way, it's going to force Kanga to re-drone that, be aware of that position. Maybe waste a little bit more time here. One minute down. Yeah, and Lev almost trapped God Legion actually with that floor destruction from the Sledgehammer. Worthy and God Legion working closely together there around the white stairs. They've also got backup on the rotate down from Digital. This is well executed. It's almost wasted half the round and a lot of drone uh, info and economy, of course. So that's a great start for them. But Kanga do have quite a lot of map control, which means they will start to be able to put pressure on towards site. And they'll also have to decide whether they're really going to try and do this take from, whether it's going to be the hatch drop freezer style, or whether they will push through to bakery and try push through prep. This is where the sledge starts to come into play here, opening up that floor. Thermite charge on the hatch. Interesting, no pressure from the garage side or the bakery side just yet. Typically, you prioritize getting one of those alls open, maybe prep wall, but. Red has been injured, likely on the bomb site. Low HP, Worthy finished off there by Spruce. Good one. It's an actually a quite a nice start for Kanga, but there's only one minute left. Yeah, Red has been able to be picked up now at least, so it does mean it's only one man down for Elevate. There's a player in coach deck. It looks like they are aware. Spruce is on the hunt there. It's going to be a close range fight with this ACOG. He's going to take it, and God Legion is going to fall to that. So Kanga moving to a bigger man advantage now. Red, low HP. This is looking pretty good for them on this first round. Campo and Spruce both very keen on this red hallway push, but choke points now that Kanga has to file through. 20 seconds, and there's a good C4 kill from Red to kick things off. Elevate just holding firm, and Kanga, they're the ones that have to move here. Elevate can just wait, hold down, right click, and tap on them, and that's exactly what Red does. Spruce comes in for his third around the side, and Boats is going to try to force down this plant. Spruce's job here is just to delay time and finish off Bast. 
on the 4K for the rounds. That's one way to kick things off. Yeah, there's a great attack from Kanga, and this is where they struggled a little bit last week against TBD. But this has actually been a really strong start. It looked like it might have started to slip away, but no, Spruce on that flank back through prep really saved it for them. And that means that Elevator are going to have to recess. Looks like they're not going to try Kitchen again, Dev. They're going to go up to the top floor. I guess what really was the main issue there for Elevate, because honestly, looking into what a four versus four as it was, or near enough in those final moments, who was it? The uh, was it, it was Red playing with the uh, the Cade got two kills in a row near the end there. I thought that Elevate would do pretty safe just to be sitting on site and waiting for Kanga to funnel through, and like you said, Spruce coming around that flank through prep. I know, I, I've got to admit, I didn't expect Kanga to be winning that round within the last 30 seconds. Yeah, it really did look like it was starting to slip away. Uh, I think it came down a bit of a positioning error, actually, from Elevate. Just the way that Fast and uh, the Valkyrie was positioned in prep. Didn't help Red as much with the crossfire. Red was, of course, the one on low HP. So once he was gone, they lost complete control of that other side, which then enabled Spruce to be able to get that prep flank off because they had to refocus. And that means that there wasn't as much presence to prevent Spruce coming through. Well, at least Elevate have changed their mind about going downstairs and they're going to stack quite a lot of that utility upstairs here. So that Mute Jammer placed at White Hallway facing into Piano to prevent any drones coming on through Pixel and God Legion as well playing the Wamai, throwing those discs around Cigar. As so typically we see the attackers prioritize this piano control take and then pushing into freezer and washrooms and executing, taking that ground piece by piece. But God Legion's very aggressive, nice and early, playing near this hatch. Is he just waiting for Leb to swing on that? Yeah, I think he is. Knowing that they're gonna bring a sledge. Backing himself to get the pick, but not gonna happen there. He's still peeking at those, he rotates back. Not oh, nice! He's just gonna get shot on the cutoff from Spruce. Spruce is having a massive game, and Hangar having a massive start to this match, Dev. What an angle on that, too. Safely outside, propelling on the piano window, looking all the way through Cigar and into Bar. And that's his fifth kill in this game as well. Sprucey shows why you want to be bringing that G36C with the ACOG, and if you're comfortable with it, no need for the R4C. I mean, on top of the ACOG, you get the angle grip as well, which uh, I know that some players enjoy having because the, the ADS time is, of course, that much quicker. You can take closer range gunfights more comfortably. Piano is, in fact, clear, so Kanga have some really important map control now. They can start to work towards opening one of these walls in towards bar or backstore. Bathroom is also clear at this stage, so Kanga can really push up deep here, but an Elevate player is retaking it. This timing might be a little off here for Spruce. Mm. Zaycog might be a crutch here. Only three players left to elevate this pick. If they can get it, could mean so much. Is that red just on the other side waiting patiently? Spruce looks the wrong way as the wall into the back store is opened. And Spruce, again, this ACOG would be blocking. He throws a drone. That's going to give the Q to red. Just going to peek on out. And that's the first pick for elevate to start clawing this back. Yeah, I felt like it was a little bit complacent there from Spruce to be in such an aggressive position to throw the drone out. Maybe needing a teammate to do so just to ensure his safety or at least cover him while he went on the drone. That was unfortunate. Ray is going to hold on to that bathroom position, so that's going to make it a bit tougher for Kangi here. But that's a fuse down actually in Cigar Digital. It's a nice shot all the way from Cocktail. He's starting to get a bit of pressure there from the window as Kanga progressed through the bar. So they have a lot of side control now. Creeping forward is Leb. A C4 comes out. Campo doubles back. Not sure where he's going, but he gets taken out. Digitals gets two more. And then Elevate cleans it up with that final kill from Red. A very nice situation to come back from. A three versus five to what? A three versus nothing. Yeah, it was a really big round from Digital as well. He hit some important shots on the Echo. Uh, that Diffuser being the most important one there in the Cigar, getting dropped in that final stage. And the Kanga had to decide to just go for those frags or try to double back and try that plant with cover. I think it created that uncertainty and it meant that Elevate could capitalize and close the rounds. And uh, look, they're not going back to Kitchen. I thought maybe that would re it, but sticking off it for now. 
Maybe not just yet, but later on perhaps. It's an unusual operator select here for the vigil with Vlas, and it does get locked in. Perhaps it's uh, to just slow down Kangar on this top floor take. So typically what we see on this bomb side is a couple of players sitting down and reading, dining on this second floor, but then a lot of people up on that top floor contesting, especially that white stairs, that cocktail area. And perhaps that Vigil, he could be playing downstairs and still be preventing that information. And it, it does look like quite a lot of information denial from Vast. Really good setup of utility. Look how many reinforcements. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven out of the ten reinforcements from Elevate all invested onto this top floor. I really like that. Mute jammers as well to prevent that easy opening of the wall to the top of tops right near white stairs. Potentially that last reinforcement is on the kit. No, okay, piano hatch still soft. Not sure where that last one went if they decided to use it, but... Overall, really nice. A lot of utility investment onto the top floor for Elevate. Yeah, I usually want to just create dining to be a trap, so it never feels that comfortable for the team to try and plant there, which means they have to push reading. And of course, to do that, they have to have that top floor control. So it makes a lot of sense to be investing a lot of reinforcements and utility up there, so that the attacking team have to make that tough decision. Do they go for what might feel like the sketchier plant, or do they go for what would be the, the safe map control this is going to be a lot harder. Looks like Kangaroo are going to be doing that exact thing with the map control, pushing top down, just like they did the previous round. Look, I wouldn't be surprised if that's the right decision. We saw yesterday LFO tried to cheese it a little bit against TBD and go for that rush into library on reading instead of trying to clear the top floor, and it most certainly did not work out for them. Good control so far for Kanga though, but they haven't got anywhere near that important point that they need to cross where all these reinforcements are invested. Felt like Lev was just gonna sledge that uh, shield, but maybe worried it's a Goyo or just not at this stage. Important for them to be able to get control of Pixel. Vigil is still hanging around there on the white stairs. Kempo pushing towards bar. Kanga are starting to push towards this map control, but Elevate holding fast here. God Legion is the one still in Cocktail. Does have some teammate backup and a Mute Jammer as well to prevent the drones coming through. Is really going to stall out that take. And as long as Elevate give themselves a lot of time of holding that position, it's going to be really tough for Kanga in that late round. Yeah, and look how perfect that is. Just a full default back onto site from Elevate. No players lost here, and two minutes wasted, they go back downstairs. Still that Vigil will be jamming up this signal, which makes Kanga unaware of whether they can trust this drone Wade man sending up to Cocktail. Surely Campo could just jump on that scanner to check where that Vigil is. Boats takes the gamble, moves up in the C4, Ooh. polishes off Campo there. Great job from Worthy, and the trap has finally been sprung. 40 seconds left. Yeah, this is feeling like a really tight round here from Elevate in terms of their strategy and how it's been played out. Almost textbook. Uh, 30 seconds to go. Digital finally gets tagged. I was about to say, nobody's lost any HP. And it's going to be up to Kanga just to kind of rush sites. Bruce looks like he's going to push through the hallway. Not going to be expecting the prone, but he does get digital. God Legion finds a double, though. What? And it's all falling apart for Kanga now. Looking good for Elevate. God Legion just fills the kill feed with four. And just like that, Kanga has been shut down on this round. Oh my god, did we just see four kills? in the kill cam, the final end of round kill cam. That is nasty, mate. You don't see that kind of thing every day. God Legion's one of those players who loves to make the highlight reel, and he does so often. Yeah, definitely his signature. He's a pretty nutty player and a good fragger for Elevate, but of course he has had some struggles in the past few matches that they've played, in fact, not really excelling to the top, but so far this is looking good for him on this map. We will finally get to see them repeat Kitchen as well. Vast switching off Bandit back to this Vigil. So really backing maybe that delay with that intel gathering. Oh yeah, it worked so well. I really like that. In fact, Kanga, if you recall in the first rounds where they attacked Kitchen Cooking, which was eventually successful, they did go for that full map control take as well. So I can picture here if Elevate try to put a little bit more investment into those upper floors, perhaps near our train, etc and have that Vigil signal just going constantly, maybe it'll delay Kanga even longer, because 
I really like the philosophy Elevate employed on that previous defense. What was it? Seven reinforcements invested into the top floor. God knows how many mute jammers and the vigil up there as well. It stalled out Kanga. It took him two minutes, just over two minutes, to get that control and Elevate. They'd already abandoned by that point. And Elevate still got the first kill by using a C4 trap. Five seconds left before insertion. Yeah, it really was beautifully held by them. And I completely agree in the, the philosophy that you don't want to just hard hold cocktail until you lose somebody because then you're down a man and you're forfeiting the map control at the same time. So yeah, that was really well played. Looks like there's a pre-placed C4 there. So another C4 trap as you call it, that they're trying to use. And they're really extending the room again for this bottom floor hole. Yeah, in fact, Worthy's just chilling out in Cigar, I guess. Surely he'll be drone before long. <laughs> Hopefully he has an escape route, but as soon as these hatches start getting opened, he's going to be more vulnerable. And it looks like some of Kanga, in fact, all of Kanga, they've completely changed tack here. They're just going for this bakery side push. Full investment over here. Spruce droning himself on the other side near Kochek, and he's got control of VIP now. Attackers have located a bomb. Yeah, Red tossing out a bit of a desperate C4 there in the breach. Just didn't ensure there wasn't a rush coming. Could have been detrimental to Kanga if that was their plan. It definitely is going to be a quick plan. I wouldn't call wow. it a rush. Wayman's in sight and gets deleted by Red. Some great shots from Red. He's really stepping up as an anchor player. And it gets another one there. Don't peek. Red Kanga, he's just wrecking you. Kanga finally answered back, but 2 versus 2 dev. I'm sorry, what? There's less than a half a round gone, and we're in a 2 versus... Okay. One versus two now for poor Leb to clutch up. Worthy, the guy who was sitting all the way upstairs, has finally got back out here. And Nade could actually make this a 1v1. Red's low HP too. Just misses out. Red's just going to be proning there. He knows any noise he makes from trying to move might give him away. Leb will die from just one shot, potentially, of that TCSG. I'm not quite sure. I'm not, I'm not, can't do the quick mass at this range, but... Being a bit low on HP there does leave Leb somewhat more exposed, and you can see Red and Worthy together just waiting. Leb knows he has all the time in the world to play with, so he's just going to do a bit of droning before peeking on in. Does trigger Red to reposition, though, so now he doesn't quite have that intel. If that drone wasn't shot, we didn't quite see it. His teammates be giving him callouts. Nicely spotted on the Valkyrie cam, so still keeping things in his favor for a chance to get this clutch. I think the real X Factor there is probably going to be worthy as he's the one on full HP. As you said, Leb has been tagged up. He's going to reposition down the red hallway, trying to catch them off. But worthy seems like he knows Dev. Worthy needs to win this gunfight. He's in a good spot. He lands the one bullet. One more, and that might be the end for Leb. But now a good crossfire employed. Red is ready to help out. And Leb does get finished off. Red through the wall there, holding firm for his team and thwarting that rush attempts. Really well done for Elevate. Red in particular had a massive round. I'm pretty sure that was a 4K in the end. He stunted that quick push from Bakery. The C4 stopped them from pushing through and every time a player tried to enter, Red was the one that stopped them. So that was a really big round from him. Elevate are moving ahead now. Ever since that first round, things are looking up. I'm pretty sure that you mentioned that being a 4K. I'm pretty sure that's actually the third 4K we've had this game. Sprucey got the first one in, in round one, and then God Legion got that just super nuts 4K. This is really a great round to let some of these players shine. A great map, a great series rather, to let some of these players shine. Defenders, protect your bombs from being defused by attackers. Definitely so far been some great individual performances. And uh, some good team play as well, highlighting the way Elevate played that. Reading Dining Bombsite in particular, I thought was fantastically executed as a team. They're going to be rotating back up to the bar cocktail, see how they go this time around. It was successful on their first try. And uh, not really having much success, it ended up being a three versus one, I believe it came down to, and it's faded away. They did get quite quick piano control, and it just came down to an error from Spruce, and I think that's what really opened it up for Elevate. Yeah, mm. hopefully Spruce is a bit more aware if he decides to peek that position again. Not sure how much information Elevate has in these rounds in terms of bringing that Echo. I haven't necessarily seen Campo destroy those Yokai drones very much. Let's get a peek about where these are. Sorry, wait, Vast, what? Where was that? So piano window, yeah, there it is. 
Well, that's the second round. Vass has killed Spruce to kick things off, and man, gotta feel sorry for the man. But it looks like Elevate have positioned themselves to hold much more heavily here and contest Piano very hard. If you recall last time, Kanga did get that first peek. Uh, uh, Spruce was actually repelled on that same window and he got God Legion who was sitting in bar just trying to move around. So, change of direction here. Tango located. Third floor. Definitely something Kanga will be susceptible to though by losing Spruce in particular is a bit of a stall. It's something that happened with them against TBD last week on this very map. And Spruce has also been a big instigator of some of that aggression, counter push. So losing him might really hurt their progression. So my charge goes off and there's now a gateway into piano, but surely oh, Vast oh. isn't gonna be allowed here to do this. Peeks on out, there's another one. Spots the player, oh, just prone. Oh, 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 Does have a C4 in the pocket. Gets a bit ambitious there on that next peak, but the Echo Drone's gonna help out, giving him the third on the round. Can he go large here? Wayne Man taken down bump. so low, Vast doesn't get his fourth there, but Red turns this into a one versus three. Both's got the world on his shoulders right now, just pre-firing, and man, he goes bam. Thanks, Red, for that one, and Elevate going strong in this defense half. That was huge from Vast there, and again, just showing a gap in Kanga, misdroning that position. Unfortunate for them, but great for Vast. As he said, he almost got the 4K. Would have been another round with a 4K. And it's just constantly different players stepping up as individuals in these rounds. But Elevate have really started to settle into a groove. They've gone four rounds in a row, in fact. And Cafe is starting to look pretty good for them. I'm really seeing Elevate be one of those teams that likes to feel out. What was their opponent like to do? What, what do we think we can get away with? You know, what, what, are, the, what are these guys going to let us do? And if Kanga are going to make those little mistakes and let Elevate do cheeky things like just sit in piano and wait for that mistro, and then, man, that's going uh, to really harm Kanga. And that's not going to stop anytime soon unless they can get their act together. Definitely be tough for them here. Oh my lord, red on 11 and 1. Sorry, Dev, I was totally blown away by that. It's only been Jeez. five rounds. And red playing a pretty hard support role. And he's played a lot of Kaid. Just popping off. Um, but what I was going to say is this library dining side in particular was actually the best defense that Elevate have had so far. Um, so this could be a really rough finish to this half for Kanga. They can't figure out how to better counter this. Dangerous times to be a Kanga fan. Vast is going to keep playing into... In fact, Elevate overall, I think they're still playing into this kind of play style where they can try to get away with things that maybe Kanga should be punished them for. Bringing that Vigil again, you can see this hold all the way extended towards Cigar and Piano. I think as this game goes on more and more, Elevate are realizing, okay, we can actually hold even more ground. And at Worst, that's just going to delay time from Kanga, and at best, that's actually going to prevent Kanga from taking this essential ground and completely stall them out. Kanga looking like they're sticking to their guns in terms of how their push is going to go down. Vast playing a little aggressive around red stairs, but just going to drop back at the side of a drone. He's got this safety position there at Pixel with the shield fall back to, and that was really the the key to elevate success the last time they held this, was the timed fallback. Shots and drones, delayed that intel gathering, fall back to safety without really losing anybody. And as you were saying, it gave Kanga about 50 seconds, 45 seconds to try and do some kind of execute. Some ground taken now. Campo's in the building, Lev as well, pushing up. You know how dangerous these C4s are though, so I'm going to be looking towards Campo to be denying that information gathering and calling out players potentially below like Red with a C4, but Spruce is on roam watch down here, just waiting for Red to make this rotation. Spruce knows that that mute is playing there, but Red's toying with him right now! What a good flick there! But it is traded off. Red does avenge God Legion, but then another trade back as well. Four versus three for Kanga, this is a good start. Man, that was a really good refrag there from Lev in that vertical position, just using the hatch. 
is a good start for them. It gives them a solid man advantage coming into the final minute. They've got good vertical control now. They can really flush out these deep positions in reading. Which means it's going to be really hard to anchor, and it's going to rely on a retake. Hang is going to have to be very careful to flank positions, especially those white stairs that Vast is just staring at lovingly, looking like he wants to push up, but not quite yet. 45 seconds to go. Kanga might be able to get this final round of the half. It feels like it's teetering towards their favor. As more of this floor gets opened up, it becomes more difficult for Elevate to play on site, so they start to move around. If Vars is lucky, there's no one dedicated to watching his flank. But in fact, there is. Campo, not sure whether he had a call for that one, but a good job, and he gets another one here. Just edge left. 20 seconds, but Kanga don't need that. They're going to finish him off, and that's finally some redemption for Kanga on the final round of their attack. It was a really good attack in the end as well. Uh, the pinch on that roamer of red in train. I mean, he's not even hard roaming in that train position. It's literally just a room away from Bonside and dining. But that pinch was really great. It had a bit of vertical play. Spruce getting that first kill onto God Legion was obviously the critical part of that. If God Legion had got the jump on Spruce, then Elevate would have probably been able to sustain a man advantage. Would have been a very different round. But Kanga should be happy with themselves getting that to 4-2. It really felt like Elevate had all the momentum starting to really run away a little bit uh, and that was a bit of an against the grain round yeah i mean we know that last week it took kango what, four rounds to really wake up against tbd and while they did come out strong with the first round here elevate really put themselves back into shape and i'm just glad that kanga managed to get back into it and end the half at a 2-4 going into their defense and that's not such a bad position to be in definitely winnable from here out if kanga have some really strong defenses and at best they might be looking at an overtime opportunity as well yeah definitely not out of the realm of possibility at all only two rounds to at least square it up and of course being on the defense half that will be a bit more of a comfort position for kanga They've gone to the library dining bomb site uh, first up, which seems to be becoming increasingly popular. But also, what's becoming more popular is there is no real main site to pick first up on Cafe anymore. I feel like we've seen so many variations over the last two days. Yeah, definitely. I mean, in, in Elevate's case, they just went to cooking first, and when that didn't work, they went straight up to bar. So, really, these teams are just comfortable wherever they are, and just. Uh, a matter of deciding what they feel like doing in a specific round. A bomb has been located. In terms of operator lineups, Elevate aren't actually bringing that Thermite at all. The Hibana was banned against them, and so Digital's going to move on to the Maverick instead, and in fact not play a Thatcher at all. So perhaps this signals that Elevate is very much used to playing this map without the Thatcher. Now, of course, if something is available and not banned, and if it's the best tool for the job, then maybe you really should be using it. But Elevate have decided to go in my eyes, a much more soft reach centric way. We have si uh, two, pardon me, two sets of grenades, six explosives total when you include the ash charges as well. That's going to be great for countering this Goya. Yeah, really, really critical. So it probably is the play that they haven't brought for that because they might have really lacked in soft reach. And that could have really come back to bite them, especially as they get closer to the side or wherever they find that these Goya shields are actually placed none really in aggressive positions from what we can see here at least they have taken good map control though in this first half of the round red's going to push deep into backstore might be the first to contest towards these players around cocktail it's going to be so important that they really start to clear this out because we saw what happened to kanga when they stalled out the first time they tried to attack this they just didn't end up having the time and eventually didn't have the manpower to be able to deal with it quite a lot of time has been wasted that nade doesn't do anything, and that's both of Red's nades, none of which have been used to clear out any kinds of shields, Goyo shields or otherwise. Spruce getting some good information here, can call out for his team. And there are two pre-placed C4s ready to be detonated. Leb gets the first kill here onto God Legion. A lot of bullets going Campo's way, but Leb's going to toss out his C4. Doesn't land. Still, these two players holding on for dear life. Oop, that nade just coming in over the top. Nice shot from Worthy there to flush him out. Lev is going to drop back down safely. In fact, not really losing any HP at all. So while Elvite do have that control, they've lost a lot of health. Now they're losing more men. It's a three versus what? three, but the control is starting to come towards Elevate. Kanga are just folding a little bit here. 
Vass, what are you doing, mate? He's just gone huge, oh. got that 3k on site, completely opened this up for Elevate. What looked to be a very strong hold from Leb. And Kanga is now going to put everything on poor Leb's shoulders. I feel like I'm seeing double here. I've seen this position before. I've seen Leb clutch up 1v3s from this position. But he doesn't have that C4. The plant's being forced down. It gets locked. He gets one kill. Totally winnable here. And both players are on this floor. He doesn't have to go upstairs necessarily. Taking around that next corner. Going to go make sure he doesn't get caught in this crossfire. But no doubt Elevate has so much information. And Vast is playing so safe outside. Leb, 25 seconds to make it happen. Digital as well, playing very patient around this corner. Leb peeks him. Oh. Nice shot from Leb, though. Digital falls means it is Leb versus Vast, both on a 3k for the round. Who will come out on top? The clock seems like it's coming out on top. Dev, yeah. only 10 seconds means it's going to be really hard for Leb to stick this. Vast is going to have to peek in. He is sticking it up to Vast to finish it off. He closes it out, gives himself a 4k, and elevate the rounds. And even if Vast had died here if Leb had gotten off the diffuser then would have been an elevate win regardless thanks to that timer really nice stuff there from elevate i've got to say getting that plant down really uh, i think it, it, it absolutely hinged on vast being able to come through and find that 3k onto the bomb side i'm not sure what the deal was but kanga seemed so happy with themselves after delaying that top floor take getting the opening pick and they seem to be a bit distracted. I think Vars decided to just go full send and it worked out so well. Unfortunately, no, we, didn't we didn't see quite... it. Yeah, that's exactly what I was about to say. We didn't quite see exactly where he pushed in, but it really did give Elevate that opening and the impact needed to be able to get into reading to Attackers stick the plant. To locate and defuse bombs. Yeah, well, man, Red, 12 and 3. He was an 11 and 1 once upon a time. That's <laughs> nuts. Anger a good start to their defense, but you know, could have been better. I think they were strong at the start of that round, but really just fast open that up. They're not going to stick to the same bomb site at all. Keep on moving. I think every time Elevate gets a chance to attack that, they're going to become more efficient at dealing with Kanga's setup on the top floor. And instead, Kanga are going to show us a very unusual strategy here for roaming on this basement, or rather, kitchen defense. Objective is to locate a Lots of good castle barricades and reinforcements and KE charges to protect this area in train, prevent the attackers from being able to push in there. But of course, the more roaming presence you have, the more susceptible your defense becomes to that rush. And that's why we've got just two players on site here. Kanga need to make sure that Elevate don't take advantage here, but not sure what the agenda is for Elevate. Main thing with that is Elevate can't really orchestrate some kind of rush unless they're going to funnel through a doorway because they brought that Maverick. He doesn't instantly open a wall, actually, it takes quite a bit of time. Spruce looking to get an aggressive jump out here from that dining window. He's all ready for that. Throws a drone through just to double check it. He's going to see that it's clear. Uh, not worry about it too much. Oh, he did catch that player in train. Bomb located uh, either way, by Elevate looks like they're going to do some kind of map clear or at least push these players back to site. Elevate just found both bombs. I think that must have been a drone coming through, so they'll know who's on site. Worthy droning himself up as well. In towards train, Leb finds that opening kill. Once again, with a C4. It's Vast who goes down this time, the man who opened up the previous round. No three-speed Ash yeeting on inside this round. Oh, that's uh, another impact player too that's been taken out. Red lost the gunfight to Leb. Elevate finally answer back though. Spruce Ooh. still hunting for this run out. Oh, he's actually going to get deleted by God Legion. Coming around the corner, that evens it out halfway through the round. So that's a pretty effective clear so far from Elevate. Have some pretty good vertical control here. This digital has pushed to the bottom of white. Thought he might start working on this wall, but I guess just wants to ensure that he is safe first. Worthy and God Legion, his two teammates alive will collectively meet him now towards VIP. Digital looks like maybe he's tempted to try to open that wall of freezer. But Elevate haven't really shown us what their clear idea is for a push. And it looks like instead of going for any of these hard walls, they're just going to start to funnel up, take control of coat check. Digital gets inside. 
He's got Worthy with him as well. A lot of walls unreinforced here. That's going to be a nice cheeky kill. Completely exposed to that angle. Worthy's now contesting. God Legion finds another C4. Doesn't net a kill. It's all boats. But he can't find a thing. And Elevate, despite losing that opening kill once again, they come back and make the round theirs. Yeah, definitely losing that echo to that angle was a real key part for Kanga there. Fell apart after that. But nice round from Elevate. Not looking to overcomplicate it. They just kept it really simple, pushed through the hallway, found that opening, and that was really it. It was all over after that. Kanga continued rotating through to Bar Cocktail now. Not looking to reattempt either of these sites. It's, I mean, library dining didn't look too bad for Kanga. It was really just down to some errors and bars popping off in that final 30 or so seconds. This is really where it looks pretty grim for Kanga, done it? 2 7 at the moment. And mind you, this is Elevate's map pick, but we've seen Kanga go far on this map before. This is, despite being Elevate's map pick, a favorite for Kanga. They play this all the time, but they just seem to lose it so often. My recent results for Kanga on this map 6 8 TBD last week, which of course Elevate could have vodded and studied and prepped for. And, uh, well, Prior to that, Kanga lost it to Knights pretty convincingly, 2-7, to seven, which looks like we might see the same result here. And even before that, Kanga lost it to Wildcard 1-7. So, despite this being a map that Kanga likes to play, seemingly, it's not one that they're good at fielding results on. Yeah, as you said, last week was really their, their best effort, especially against a good team on Cafe. But one thing I really do feel like is playing a factor here is that is a real fresh VOD for Elevate to have used. And on top of that, because of Kanga's roster changes, you'd have to expect that their general strat and map pool depth is probably not quite where they'd want it to be at this stage, which is just the natural thing that happens when you go through roster changes. It's not just teaching... I mean, you can't just teach old strats because they're old strats. That's mm. already out there. You have to try and think of new stuff. And damn, Vast is so keen on the Ash, isn't he? Drone comes out. Second one's gonna come out, and it's not even Vast who gets the kill. Spruce is there to get digital, evening up that man count. It's clear from downstairs, is starting to work out, but it is all the hard breach eliminated for Elevate, so we'll have to deal with a more choke point heavy hold. And one thing I might add, Leb, who has been one of the shining lights for Kanga, he's got the opening kill on the prior two rounds. He's the first one to go here. There's also a Gokai that Vast shot there on the brown stairs, but that's some really important utility that's not going to be available for Kanga when you want to be using it more so. Close to the end of the round. Spruce got tagged up quite heavy in an engagement as well. So Elevate holding the advantage here early in this round. Kanga still, of course, have many a chance to close it out, but... So far, Elevate look like they're gaining some really important map control and just being very thorough. Well, there's no surprises ahead of them. Boom goes the Goyo shield. Ash charge is gonna give Elevate... Oh, no, it's not gonna give Elevate another avenue because it got caught by the Wamai disc. Mask might, in fact, use a second one here to open that wall. Not sure what he wants to do at the moment. Gonna drone in. Checks up white hallway. Those punch holes in that wall or a way for the defenders to get angles onto the attackers from a potentially advantageous position. Vast is going to throw some stuns on in. You can see how cautious Red is of these holes, but by the fact that he hasn't been shot so far, he expects there's no one sitting on the other side waiting for him. Oh no. He's going to get caught off guard there by the one mine. It's got Legion walking straight into the hands of boats. Final 30 seconds, Kanga have taken a bit of an advantage here. Clock also gives them that advantage, of course, the natural advantage of defense. Vast is going to go deep. He's going to get shut down, though. Dev, 20 seconds. Kanga looking good. I've seen at least three of these shields that seem to be putting a stop to elevate in their tracks, and every time they try to make a play, someone's there to shut him down, all on red. He's got the one, only two more, and that Nomad charge gives him a signal. He knows where that player is. The attackers, the defenders rather, have control of that defuser. He can push on through, but they're not going to give him anything. He might have gotten that kill, but there's no time left. Campo has the defuser nice and snug. And Kanga, hey, they're still in this. Three to six. 
Yeah, still every chance. Of course, they are on the defense. Commonly, it's where you see the consecutive round runs on Cafe. So every shot in their hand here. Yeah, in fact, that's actually the first rounds there where the, the timer expired. Hmm. Yeah, well, I really feel like one of the things that slowed down Elevate there was just not dealing with any of those shields. I'm not sure if all of them were Goyo shields. I'm pretty sure I saw three of them and, and Goyo only gets two. So there was the one at the new balcony on the cocktail side and one yep. at uh, in the freezer protecting that player. And I'm not sure whether there was one near white stairs or pixel, but I really feel like with the amount of soft breach and explosives that Elevate have been bringing to our charges and four grenades, we should be seeing those get destroyed because Kanga was so comfortable sitting on those shield positions and anchoring there, preventing that push in from Elevate. If Elevate had destroyed those, it might've been a different story. Yeah, I think you're right. That probably did create the stall point there for Elevate. They, were, they did lose digital quite early as well, which meant that certain things couldn't play out as they would have expected, such as taking a nice line of sight or even a rotate yeah, in towards backstore. Those things led to them really stalling out. Anger are going to be going back to Kitchen. We saw this go successful in the way of Elevate. Based on just keeping it simple, Kanga tried a pretty extensive roam. It got it mostly cleared out, but then as it came to execute, instead of opening walls or trying to do something complicated, they just pushed down hallway, found a line of sight onto that Echo, and then that was pretty much it at that stage. It's pretty likely that, I think, it was it Boats who played the, uh, the Echo last round? Maybe it was Leb. I think it's pretty likely that whoever that was, he's not going to be letting himself get caught out in such an exposed position this time. I'd hope not, at least. Elevate are going for this map control take at least for now. Likely to be met with some contention here. Le Leb just on the east side, but for the most part, no roamers. And Vast has also got this jackal now to just clear off that roam clear. Make it even faster, more efficient. Double check that there's no one playing on this top floor. Anyone who has come up here, they can just figure out where he is right now by a quick jackal scan. God Legion's going to clear out any information gathering or other util that might be used. Oh, there's a mozzie pest, so good information denial from Kanga, and that forces God Legion to shoot that drone. Really good from Elevate to bring that jackal as well, as if you're going to do a full map clear for attacking Kitchen, you want it to be efficient, you want it to be quick, otherwise you're not giving yourself much of a chance. Put that pressure on site, and that means that Vast can come through, scan those footprints, see what's there and what's not. And they don't have to drone as much, so to speak. Of course, it's going to be a little thorough and not complacent. But it will speed Ooh. things along. And oh no, that's Red going down to a C4 from Campo. Again, the big impact player for Elevate has now been eliminated pretty early. I feel like Campo's had a good last two rounds as well. Impact kills here. It's also a lot of explosives that are gone from Red. Fortunately, there's not many shields or any shields, I believe, they have to deal with. Digital's going to start by opening up this hatch. Remember that usually Digital would be playing the Habana, but Kanga has banned that. Now, I'm actually starting to see how that's affecting Elevate on their attacks. You know, time's ticking away, and Digital's still trying to deal with this hatch. He doesn't want to get exposed and get shot through it. He does open it up, goes prone here. Vulnerable to a C4, but Lev doesn't seem to be going for it. He also shoots that drone. Back up on that long angle from the floor there. Ooh. Right away, though, that's a nice shot from Digital. Evens out the man count. But it's down to 25 seconds there, so time has really ticked away from Elevate. That means it's going to have to be an explosion, and it's going to have to come soon. Oh, and he spots out the mozzie on that rotation. Digital's nade does find that kill onto Leb, and here's a drop through the hatch. God Legion finds another, just Campo and Wayne to hold it. Campo gets another. Such an impact player. But there, it's finally closed out, and that's the map for Elevate. Vast to find the final kill. And Elevate take their own map pick. And quite strongly at that. Uh, there's a couple of rounds where Kanga looked pretty decent and that they were in it, but Elevate just constantly ran back over the top of them. I mean, that round in particular just then, it looked like it was going to be good for Kanga. They had equal man range, four versus four. And with only about 25 seconds to go, that really normally favors the defense. They could have sat pretty, had some better crossfires, but Elevate just able to find those picks through those angles and just made something out of nothing. 
yeah, um, something that we saw consistently elevate, being put into deficits on their attacking side and somehow managing to pull it through. I think the round that really sparks up interest for me is that library dining attack, which was the first attack from Elevate, and we saw such a good strategy from uh, Kanga. They were really holding on to that cocktail top floor as long as possible. Got the opening pick. I think they got the next one as well. They were looking so good. Fast drops down and finds a 3k. I mean, what can what can you do, right? So uh. something Elevate were just consistently good at on their attacks is pulling rounds out of deficits. Yeah, that's totally right. And I think something that was the opposite for Kanga is they kept creating circumstances that would cost them the round ultimately and the big one for me that stands up for that was the fifth round that was the bar cocktail defense for elevate and vast was misdroned in that spot over near the, the coat rack there in piano and he was massively impactful after that he actually ended up getting a 3k in that round so stuff like that really just hurt kanga a lot yeah, I mean, it was a real great showcase on Elevate's own defenses. And unfortunately for Kanga, they can only muster one for themselves. But that's all for our first map. We have one more map of this series. It's going to be Consulate coming to you in just a minute.
Oh, hello there, how you going? We got six masters ready for you. I'm Dev, this is Raven. We're halfway through this best of two series between Elevate and Kanga, and well, it's uh, proving to be a bit faster than last night, to say the least. Yep, really is. That was a, a much quicker map one, and uh, a really good performance from Elevate in the end. Uh, they had a couple of rounds where it looked like they, they struggled a bit. Kanga started strong. That first round was actually great for the Kanga on their attack, but from that point on, Elevate really did start to control the map. Yeah, and uh, if you guys want to keep up to date with all the uh, all the stuff we got going on, if you want to have a bit of a say in, I noticed our social media manager put his own tweet in the highlighted tweets. So, a little bit of bias there, but if you want, you can get yourself highlighted tweets up there as well. Hashtag 6masters, also go to at Rainbow6ANZ on all your different channels. Uh, you can get the poll votes as well and kind of get involved in that too, which is good fun. But yeah, Elevate Kanga. Cafe was Elevate's pick. They won at 7-3. It looked like it might have even been a 7-2 at some points. But uh, i got to say, I was pretty impressed by, by quite a few of the players. Vast, in particular, had a couple rounds where he really opened things up. And I mean, the stats don't lie. Red, despite going negative in his opening KD, 0 for, for 1, he was just so good. What was it? Like 11 and, and 1 by round 5. Crazy. Yeah, that's, that's right. Yeah, it was that 11 and 1 stat that was the most mind-blowing part. Um, but yeah, he had a big impact for most of that match. The biggest one that stands out to me was a 4k round that he had when they were defending Kitchen. And it was Kanga trying mm. to do that quick attack through Bakery. And as they tried to enter through the breach, Red was just popping them off with that TCSG. And he ended up surviving the entire round. Uh, so it was really critical for Elevate at that stage as well. It was early in their half. And from that point on, they really built on that. It's been a great set of 4Ks this game. I haven't tracked all of them, but I got Spruce got one, uh, Vast got one, God Legion got one, Red got one. I yep. swear someone else got one as well. It's been... I think Camper um, got a 3K. <laughs> mm, yeah. Oh man, it's it's been so good. Like This has been such a yep. great opportunity for these players to showcase them, their, their plays. It yeah, it really Vast has. got the other one. Vast got another one. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> I'm getting carried away. I just think it's so many 4Ks. <laughs> yeah, but like considering that we only had 10 rounds, that is a lot of 4Ks. Like the density of 4Ks in that was huge. So yeah. uh, it showed some really good individual performances. But overall, I just felt like Elevate in general had a lot nicer team play. And that was what really mm. dismantled Kanga. Yeah, so I mean, Kanga's got some good players. We had some good highlights from them, but you're saying it's Elevate who are really functioning a bit better as a team. Let's have a look at what you guys thought on the poll that we had up on Twitter. And it is favoring that Elevate quite substantially, which has been reflected in the results thus far. Yep, and uh, it means that 16% of people are now wrong in their prediction. And uh, there's 84% uh, of <laughs> the pollers that still have a chance here as we uh, move on to Kanga's map pick. I mean, the draw, could be a thing. Mm. 
And yeah, those 3% people that they're, they're gone for that draw, they're sitting there thinking, this is my time to shine. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm totally cool to uh, imagine a draw here, remembering that that was Elevate's map pick. And in this veto system that we use, teams are heavily favored on their own map pick because the opposition only gets one map ban. It's more like a best of three system where each team gets one map pick. We just don't play the decider map. So it is Consulate. It is Kanga's map pick. It is an opportunity for redemption, for a bit of revenge, a rematch from the last time these guys played each other. Let's get stuck in. Let's get stuck right in. It's going to be Consulate, as you said. And I'm excited because Elevate actually, this is the map they did well on against LFO last week. And in the past, they've had some mixed results on Consulate, but mostly positive. I think this could really work out well for them. I'm not sure whether Kanga have something up their sleeve, but we'll see. And when you mentioned mixed results there for Elevate, what comes to mind is that 2-7 loss against Wildcard. And I think that's what we're really going to be looking to and seeing. If we can see Elevate step up here and take this map, it maybe quells some of the doubts we had about them when they played against Wildcard here. And maybe that was just an off day. Yeah, big chance for them to prove it here. I mean, they did take down LFO on this map. And if they continue that strength, then it really does change our minds so to speak on that a really interesting ban on the pulse there probably more of a target ban because spruce has played that a lot and we've seen him play it on cafe seen him play it on this map before other maps it's something he leans on in fact he leaned on it a lot last week against tbd on this map picking off i think it was for joker playing a lot of thatcher it was the opening death like three rounds in a row all because spruce was just pulsing him out and getting his jump out yeah, so a nice little counterbound there. Hopefully it'll shut down Spruce a bit because the man was, I mean, not necessarily, I, I don't know his overall KD, but in terms of opening, Spruce was almost always in those opening engagements. He was in five of them and he won just over half of that, ending up positive one. So Spruce is a man who likes to get himself in the fight nice and early. Six picking off the Echo, it seems, but not sure what he's going to go on to at the moment. Might actually just stick it. Yeah, no, Castle. Okay, Castle for Garage Cafeteria. That's not a common pick. Attackers need to locate and yeah, a bit different bomb. there. Wondering whether he was indecisive or they weren't really sure. They weren't expecting that false counterband. So they were discussing what Spruce might be able to roll onto. Maybe he just really, really wanted to use the U UMP, seeing as he couldn't use it on Pulse. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, bro. That's it. You nailed him. <laughs> so let's have a look wayne man's looking for some uh, okay let's doing these rehashes i like this something that's underrated i think especially if you play a lot of ranked or what have you reinforcing these hatches in visa when you're on a downstairs defense there are so many ways the attackers can just very quickly get control of that uh, archive side where we see boats right now opening up those hatches and getting that control it can be deadly so you know, you don't need a lot of reinforcements on this particular bomb site, especially if you're not holding up into piano, as we see Kanga are not. So, reinforce those hatches, why not? Another important point we didn't really touch on is that Thatcher is yet again available, but we're not seeing it used much. I mean, definitely not on this round. Be curious to see whether that's something that the attack does rotate in as we progress. Potentially elevate not predicting that Kanga would be going downstairs for the first pick. Mm. That's going to be pretty helpful just getting that wall open nice and simple. Oh, okay, Spruce. I guess that no harm, no foul. That's just one wasted air jab. Maybe that was the idea there. The second one's going to go out. Is he just going to go and waste that? That's some good utility wastage there. Surely he's not going to jump out there. Didn't get the drone. But nonetheless, that's good utility wastage. And you can see the feature of this castle barricade. Doesn't get that drone, unfortunately, for Spruce, but really helping to prevent this flank watch. And then an angle from above is going to give God Legion that kill. Great usage there and fully counters what Spruce has gone for. I love it. Yeah, that was fantastic play from Elevate to take him out of that position. So no longer an impact. And that means they can take a lot of map control pretty quick now. He really was that stall point. They will be able to take this top floor, start to push down. Of course, the buck was banned. We'd normally use quite traditionally around piano and chamber to flush out really important positions in garage and in kitchen. Something that Elevate will have to adapt to. Probably leaning on some breach charges. Yeah, maybe from God Legion, digital, red. 
Something I did want to touch back on again is uh, you talked about the lack of a Thatcher, and it's not the only significant operator that's missing here. We've got no Thermite and no Maverick, both of which are really, really good for opening up that main garage wall that is so often a point of contention. Just having that Hibana, especially when Kaida's present, can make this so difficult. And Digital's got a lot on his shoulders here. There's a lot of risk. If he loses even just one Hibana pellet, that's a big deal. Electric Claw taken out. Some first Hibana pellets going on now. His boat's going to throw an Electric Claw out. The two one Hibana pellets on the right is going to make a crouchable entryway. And then the other one on the left is going to be to cut off some of the positions that the uh, yellow pillar just there and towards red hallway, Attackers but that wall is successfully bomb. opened. Attackers recovered the bomb. Yeah, that's just gonna come down to the denial. Nice long angle there from the security desk, but boats will get the pick onto red. Another impact player taken out for Elevate coming into this final stage. It's up to Campo here. He's got the important part in those smoke babes. Digital is just gonna get absolutely pumped through with the evil eyes there. And they're just gonna have to go deep. Refuse it down now. Two versus two as Elevate bring it back. Counting down to these final stages, they're gonna push deep for these. No picks. way! Worthy in pursuit. One versus one, but he's gonna have to stick this. It's all up to Wayne, man. He knows where the plant no is. He can deny. And an easy round win for Kengar in that final second. On well, that last kill, might have been easy, but the rest of the round was anything <laughs> but for Kanga there. Yeah. Really came down to just the last few seconds there and. I think part of the problem there was Elevate it took them so long to finally get that wall open. By the time they did, I took a look at the clock, I stopped speaking, and there was 30 seconds left for that execute to happen. And Elevate hadn't found any picks through the floor, really looking onto that bomb site. They had that opening kill when they'd taken Spruce out earlier, but I mean, Spruce basically just wasted that bit of time at the start of the round. Kanga didn't really need him for the rest of it. They locked it down quite nicely. The other thing on top of that is that once Elevate did get that wall open, uh, most importantly, those smoke babes are still in the pocket. So it delayed their entry, and then he hit a beautiful one when Digital was trying to plant. At the same time, an evil eye was zapping him, so they really didn't clear a lot of the utility required to even get a safe plant down or an unnoticed plant down. Uh, so it was really all leaning towards Kanga's favor coming into the final stages of that half. Elevate tried to make something work going deep, getting those picks. Almost paid off, but no, Kanga did manage to ice the clock Cannot enough so that they could finish it off easily. And we'll rotate to the top floor bomb site now. I do have to echo that statement that you were saying about the util that we saw from Five Kanga minutes. and how that prevented Elevate getting that plant down. To me, that was the uh, the key that really spurred Ele uh, kept uh, Elevate to kind of get desperate and Kanga to hold on. That combination of tick damage from the Maestro camera, the information it gives as well, and then the added tick damage of that smoke. It was impossible for Elevate to get away with a safe plant. They had to go for broke, and wow, it was so difficult. Two Kanga players here just on the uh, lower spiral stairs early in this round. So looking to quite impactful roam or a heavy roam presence downstairs early in the round. Elevate. Located a bomb. Are aware or try to actually push and clear that. One thing I did just notice was actually Wayne Man got a 3k in that first round and he was really struggling to get into the game on Cafe. I uh, really can't recall many rounds where he had kills and for a while I did see that he was on that donut. Good to see that he might be finding uh, his place in this map. And his util was super essential as well playing that Maestro last round. We talked about how impactful that was. We alluded earlier to this roam downstairs, boats and spruce. Elevate have taken control of the bottom floor. Looks like they're trying to force their way up the yellow stairs. This is a very risky play, especially going into that smoke. At least they're burning this utility early. Spruce does take out one of those drones watching that flank, but the player on the repel is aware of it. Oh, Spruce almost gets punished there. Put under the pump and he's going to get all the way back towards the visa side safely in tellers now although they still haven't found that pick they're looking for yeah they're really trying to force something here with yellow that smoke is going to stall them out but wayman man taken out now by digital it's going to give them some kind of opening here but an unpredictable position it at least gets refragged by god legion last kind of dying cheaply there 
Another one still in this roam that Elevator very much aware of, looking to pinch him out in lobby. It is Spruce, who was tagged up in that earlier engagement. This is going to be a really important pick, as he does have that C4 in the pocket, which means that denial will be very much possible, but getting a pick is not possible for Spruce any longer as he's taken out. Thirty-five seconds left. Hibana opening up some angles from the bathroom. Repel looking towards Connector to cut off any players getting aggressive. And God Legion also drones that up. I like this idea here. Attempting to make a one-way angle is the Hibana, but it does make it very vulnerable for him to try to push in. Red gets another. That's the Nomad. All led now, and his entryway is bought off. He spots that player at top spiral, but. He can't push through this flame just yet and try and capitalize. Where this going to force that plant down? It does get down successfully. And now Red's going to be keen for another kill here. Leb doesn't manage to win that fight. Elevate, get themselves on the board. Yeah, really nice attack from them in the end. They didn't let that roam have an impact at all. They cleared that with relative ease, bringing it to a 4v2. And in that final stage is those bathroom holes, that line of sight cutting connector was really crucial. Uh, they could really comfortably rotate or repel into CEO at that stage to get the plant down. There wasn't too much the Kanga could have done. Get nice and even, maybe maybe a trade of rounds more so on this map. I mean, Kanga did win the first round on Cafe as well, but then Elevate managed to claw back four in a row after that. Yeah, and it looks like Kanga don't necessarily have a lot of um, Confidence in that top floor bomb site, they're gonna rotate down onto lobby. Or at least this does indicate that maybe yeah, they're pretty comfy on lobby and happy to just give Constal Office a mix and a miss yeah, rather and go lobby here. here. Next round they can go back down bottom garage, which didn't work out so well for Elevate when they tried to attack it. Kanga bringing uh, quite a plant denial faced lineup, focused lineup here. Two C4s on Campo and Boats. And then Wayne and Spruce, both with the Echo and Maestro, to deny that plant and give that site information. Some good information denial as well. Campo and Boats, Mutant Mozzie. I'm expecting to see some kind of top floor presence as well. Is Mozzie pests will make taking that control from Elevate's perspective quite a bit more difficult. Very typically, we do see this top floor control from the defenders on this kind of a defensive lobby, opening up holes in meeting right here where Leb and Boats sit to deny a lot of these default plant spots. Definitely the philosophy we've seen from Kanga a lot is to extend quite deep in terms of roam. Cafe there had a lot of top four presence. Seems to be very similar here on Consulate, so what all they do to try and counter that. They have a drone at lobby door, maybe looking for the cheeky position or opening there to be able to get a plant, but at this stage they're trying to get that top floor control, which will be so critical if they are going to plant in lobby in particular. You will need that control of meeting, controlling that line of flat from the hatch and the holes through the floor. Otherwise, there's not really any way you'll be able to safely plant. That drone does spot out poor Leb here. Cautious, there's a lot of angles for him to contest. I think that angle from Admin also looking into desk was also opened up, which prevented him from rotating out that side. He drops the hatch, gets back to site. Not punished on that hatch drop, funnily enough. It's quite an easy thing to prevent from Elevate's perspective. You've got someone outside lobby door that can do that, but all their players were busy elsewhere. And now still on these repels, just looking for these players on these rotations. Kanga, just sitting tight for now. Spruce does get that opening frag. Vast goes down. Bit of utility lost there. Elevator really struggling with this clear. I mean, Boats has now dropped back, but he wasn't pressured to. He just decided that's what he wanted to do. Other than that, Elevator just not really obtained much control. Kanga are uh, starting to return back to site here as Worthy and Digital really pushing in the lobby. We did see Campo down on the basement floor, so he could be able to chuck a C4 up through a hatch for plant denial. Red is trying to counter pinch here through the tellers. See whether he can get something happening. A bit of an opening for his team. That's actually going to be a wasted C4 there from Campo, but the double flank is on. Oof. That was very nice. 
absolutely forced smash through that wall and red ready to capitalize on that thanks to the nomad charge worthy's getting the plans down and red's getting everyone else on kanga down but spruce going large he gets two he gets that plan tonight as well Led coming for the flank red does trade out boats red's good for another one as well now it's just leb left but red has to go huge here surely how many kills has red found this round is it three is he on for the ace right now forcing this plant down 10 seconds leb we know how good he's been he has information on to red arx in hand a very high damage weapon but leb's just too good for that and he does deny that round from elevate and secures this counter defuse defenders have disabled the bomb diffuser leb is just turning into a ice blooded player he has hit so many clutches in the last two weeks i swear Either way, he's been really playing well for Kanga, securing that round for his team. Red looked like he was just going to completely slice and dice Kanga. But thankfully, Spruce stood up for them. He brought it even and enabled Leb to be able to secure it. A good round, pretty close. And Constant just feels generally a lot closer than how Cafe felt as we got deeper mm -hmm. into the map. So I like this start from Kanga so far. And even Elevate, I mean, their attacks have looked half decent the thing with that one was they just really struggled to get meaningful map control for a majority of that round and really a lot of the almost success from elevate came from red going in i don't know whether he was on that 3k whether he was on that 4k gunning for the ace but man he really turned it up there and not only with that flank watch using the nomad charges but also that just making entries once elevate got that position for the plant the big question for me is where was Spruce when he denied that plant and took out that other player? I'm pretty sure he was just pushing in from anti-chamber. Don't think he was using those holes through the floor, which is kind of our critique or your critique there from Elevate was that they didn't really maintain top floor control that well, but I don't think that ended up making such a difference for Kanga. Yeah, Elevate was really slow, but I don't think Kanga actually used that top floor control to deny the plant in the end. I think they just peaked from anti. Yeah, I also didn't really catch where Spruce was from. I actually thought maybe it was the Telesnide, but that might have been Leb's position. Either way, you're right. It just, they didn't have to worry as much about it, but I also feel like if they had it earlier, they might have had a more comfortable position at that stage of the round. See what Kanga have in store for us on this top floor bomb site. They've got three ADSs all dedicated to yellow stairs there, so they really want to hold that position. It's become quite common, really. In fact, overseas, it very much became meta to ban the Capital. And Capital would be uh, the, the main counter here to this kind of uh, ADS setup from Kanga because Capital's incendiary bolts don't get caught by those ADSs, but no Capital from Elevate. Still available, but just not an operator that we see a lot of ANZ teams really like to favor. There is the Wamai there as well, though. I guess I didn't account for that, which would counter the Capital. A few flashes. It looks like it might be an admin take from Elevate. Yes, in fact, Elevate. Already have two players inside of Admin making very good time. That's surely going to be a free kill. <laughs> Made me a bit scared there, God Legion, but Spruce <laughs> does finish off, get finished off, and that's all those Maestro cameras not going to be used to deny plant. Yeah, that's actually a really big pick. Uh, not being able to use those evil eyes if they're not looking in the right spot, well, then they're stuck. They can't actually be activated. And also, Spruce has had a bit of an impact for Kanga. He was pretty helpful for them on Cafe, and... He really brought them back into that previous round. It looked like Elevate were going to get an open plant with a couple players up, but he managed to help bring Kanga back into it. So nice, aggressive start from Elevate to get that map control. Good chance for this round. And also, those ADS is all essentially wasted now on yellow if they can't reposition them. Well, here's the thing. Elevate previously went for that primarily roam clear focus take and then moving into a yellow CEO execute. And this round, they've completely changed their direction. They're going from admin side instead. That means that Kanga has invested all of that utility, including all three ADSs, into defending the take that Elevate isn't even going for. Worthy's found another kill here from this meeting balcony. And Elevate are looking to be in a really good position with no players left in meeting. Elevate ready to start taking this. One minute left. Yeah, important long angle there from private bathroom they will have to try and deal with because that entry into meeting is never going to be safe unless they manage to flush out Wayne Man in this position. Leb does get an impact there onto Worthy. So that's one start. Final 30 seconds. Elevate have quite a lot of map control, an important map control at that. 
but I still don't oh, have a clear safe kill. entry, and that's the last jump Defender out from Leb. Leb has been on fire. What a risky jump out, but it doesn't seem like it'll get punished. No one from Elevate's in that position to do so. Red eventually does, but there's just no time left. 15 seconds. Red's going to get desperate, pushing up the yellow stairs. Elevate do have the numbers advantage here, but they're the ones who have to force this plant down. And there's so much information for Kanga. Starting to peek on through. Vars gets taken down. Wayne Man finds one as well. It's all up to Red, oh. and he clutches it. Somehow, Elevate steal that round away. Oh, I wish I could have had a look at the clock again there, Dev, because that, I reckon that was at least a double zero when that final frag <laughs> came out. I don't know, that was real close. Kanga going to be a bit disappointed with how that finished off. I was quite surprised that Elevate just left the diffuser on the meeting balcony and elected to go for the frags. They still had a bit of time. They were getting pinged out with that intel, but with Red on the counter pinch, I mean, it felt like the plant was going to be safe enough, but hey, they got the round in the end. We did see a lot of drones come out just prior to that, plus they had detected Leb, so I feel like they knew where all of the remaining players were and felt comfy going for that just frag chase instead of kind of go for that diffuser, because there were a lot of risks going for that diffuser. There was a situation there after Leb had been taken out by Red, it was a 3 versus 2 for Elevate, so they have the numbers advantage, but as soon as you stick one guy planting that diffuser, not only are your players worrying about protecting that guy, but you've essentially evened up the man count to 2v2 because that guy on the diffuser can't enter a gunfight. So you're really giving Kanga a good opportunity to even things back up and potentially deny that plant really put Elevate on the rope. So it was a risky decision, but I think it was the right decision. And in this case, it actually did work out, even though it hit the double zero there. <laughs> Yeah, definitely just a fraction there where it could have been a different conversation that we're having in terms of how that worked out. Uh, look, I just noticed Red again. He's on 8 and 2. After four rounds, uh, he's having another big map here. He's really been what I would consider probably Elevate's MVP. Not just because he's been getting the frags, but the frags he's been getting have been really impactful. That lobby round was really not looking like theirs at all, and he gave them a chance in that. And even similar in that previous round that we just saw, he got a couple of really important peaks to be able to enable them to go deep for those frags. So yeah, they've really been shutting down. Before. And yeah, playing the Nomad, he's been shutting down Kanga's flanks really well. Had a lot of success yep. with that utility. And always seems to be rotating to where he's needed as well. On the flip side, Leb is a player I would totally be putting on a pedestal here for Kanga. He's been stepping up and doing through that previous round, it was an earlier pick. And then with that jump out, I thought that was an essential position, taking out that player near the meeting balcony. Looks like Leb is keen for another early pick. I think that was one of the Yokai drones just got taken out from Wayne, actually. Dangerous. And here we are back on a garage defense for Kanga. Notably, this is the first garage, or the first bomb site that they were successful at winning. And they could have gone back to it that previous round. It wasn't locked, it was unlocked. And they decided to go top floor instead. Didn't end up working out for them, but it goes to show that Kanga do have confidence in their top floor, or they don't have as much confidence in this basement defense. And something that has persisted is the absence of Thatcher. Even though for a long time he has been the most popular attacker ban in our region. Now that he's available, I mean, you would assume by that 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 means he's just so strong you should be picking him he's available, but... Attackers not the case, and I mean, it's great that teams have adapted to not using him. And there are some instances here where I really feel like they should have just brought it. Uh, a great example is this garage wall. I mean, they do have the vertical control. It looks like it's going to work out for them. But you have to Ooh. wonder, actually it's not! Oh, that Kai charge was perfect just then. And that's all of the ex Kairos is brought. Yeah, and that exact play from Boats with that Kai trick would have been counted by that Thatcher that you're mentioning. Yep. Not to say it's the only way to counter it, but this is really going to force Elevate into some creative problem solving. With no ability to open up these hatches, as I'm fairly certain Kanga reinforced both of the hatches onto the bomb site. And we saw earlier in the game they were reinforcing archive side hatches with two players holding archives. Kanga, no doubt, aware that they've wasted all of the Hibana pellets. First pick goes Wayne's way as well. 30 seconds left, and Elevate looked to be completely lost. There's Red though, getting them back in. God Legion does find one as well, and it's all the frags now, bringing it to a two versus two. Red is on the prowl here in the locker hallway. He knows there's a player in archives, and he's got the jump here. He's going to peek around. 
gets the pre fire and the down, so now it's no two versus one. No! Blade goes down, Dev. Red closes the round for Elevate. And they get a round that just, again, really could have been Kangas. Red ran right past the Echo there, and I was terrified because I knew the only reason that Echo is on his cameras right there is because he knows he can deny that plan and save this round. Man, if Red. If, if Wayne Man had actually managed to deny the plant before we hit, the, before it got down, that round probably would have gone to Kangas, and it might have been Red looking back on the stream later and thinking, damn, I ran right past him and missed that opportunity. But, I, I mean, I, like, if we take a step back, right? 30 seconds left, I threw to you and I said, all right, Wayne Man's finally got the first pick. It's now a, a four versus five for Elevate, and they have to funnel through. There were gas grenades. Clogging up the yellow stairs. It looked like there were no options for Elevate. And yet they come back with all of those picks and funnel through and make it work somehow. Yeah, I mean, I think I would say that just somewhat highlights the team play of Elevate. There's some synergy in their comms because, by all rights, like you're saying, Kanga should have been in the box seat position to close that round out. But just through pushing together, getting refrags, I mean, the kill feed was just constantly blue orange, blue orange, blue orange. Ten seconds to go. And eventually it did just come down to that two versus two, and it meant that Red was able to clutch it out. To but yeah, I just think some nice coordination in those final moments just to allow Elevate to at least box. trade it out and be in that position to actually make something happen. Kanga are going to have to head back up to this meeting. They've tried it twice so far. Haven't been successful. I mean, Elevate have demonstrated some good versatility here. They went for a yellow take and CEO take in that first round. Really effectively countering Kanga's downstairs roam clear. Then Elevate moved and decided to go for an admin take. The presence on this balcony here outside meeting. It looks like this is the strategy that Elevate will indeed be going for once again. Worthy, the meeting balcony player, loses his first drone. I'm pretty sure that Kanga also has quite a few roamers, which I noticed just previously, including potentially Wayne Man all the way downstairs. Looks like he is, in fact, still downstairs. All the way down in... In fact, it's the two three-armor one-speed operators who are chilling out on the middle floor. Wait a second. I'm a squad. It's Bobby. I was Holy just crap. To catch I just how how did... <laughs> Why? Why did you not correct me earlier? Damn it, Raven! And now I'm missing all these kills. Let's find the first one, and this roam on the top floor, which is not the bomb site, seems to be doing some damage, but he does get traded. Look, in my defense about not correcting you, I didn't really know that you weren't sure of the bomb site until that final part where you said that the, oh, no. the three armors were roaming. I just made Either the point one. about how they lost this bomb site twice, but no, in fact, they won this bomb site on the defense previous time. Yep. Kanga chose this, they want it, so things are looking pretty good. <laughs> yeah, at least they traded out that first pick there. Uh, what really struggled for Elevate last time they attacked this was that meaningful map control. He said that even though the verticality didn't come into it, it's just that pressure, that perceived pressure onto Kanga. It was never there, so it looks a little bit better for them so far as a minute in God Legend is actually sitting in meeting. They've reprised their positions back at the front of Lobby Door, so they might even be looking to try and do a bit of the Execute soon. I don't think that Digital spotted the Yokai drone there. But Wayne Man, I do believe, has one. He's going to take a look around 4-1. Wayne Man does have his Yokai eliminated. Good eye there for Dig. Boats is going to find one kill. Worthy protecting the plant just perfectly. Finds two, gets yeah, more aggressive on it. Diffuser. Plant goes down. Eventually a refrag, Boats finds a second. Digital as well to shut another one out, all on Boats. One versus two. It's gonna be a difficult one, especially if Elevate plays this passively. Or not Defender hitting the mark though. The Just being patient, protect. time is ticking away though. It looks like he might get aggressive with the window. No, he's gonna back away. He's trying to get this vertical position. He knows that if he can't shut that down, it's gonna be really, really hard to be able to stick with the fuse. Trying to bait out some shots here, but time is fast ticking away. Elevate will actually close it out. God Legion finishing it off. And it was a much better round from them once they got that vertical control. They were set and Worthy perfectly covering that plan. He got that double kill, which meant it went down. And Kanga with a very, very tough task on that retake.
Yeah, I definitely reckon that that plant cover from Worthy was one of the instrumental parts of that attack there. I, I wasn't super um, across what Elevate did to ensure Kanga didn't have that top floor control. At the start of the round, I saw them taking from Admin, and I think Kanga just decided to peel away gradually from that meeting hold, and they started having plays towards CEO. Not holding on to that meeting went that Elevate, despite not necessarily having a player up there until I think it was just God Legion at the end there, they could really cover that plant. They didn't have to worry about those vertical holes, so Worthy yeah, could just look horizontally to that anti-chamber in that a lobby double door swing. Well, that's uh, Kanga's defense half not being particularly successful on Consulate. Something that Bruce said in the interviews before that defense would be a bit of a comfort for them. Okay. A bit alarming here on their map pick. That things have looks like a bit of a struggle. Like getting the majority of rounds and a bit of an interesting setup here in admin since you hard deny that entry there with those goyo shields remaining and we do have not only the goyo but also the wamai and the jaeger which can protect some of those shields and on top of that there's extra um utility that will require those explosives to destroy in the castle so really we've got five things and there's the wamai discs coming out to protect that shield preventing this admin push really quite like that and in fact Instead of reinforcing that wall from admin to top visa stairs, it is left open and red's shooting some holes in it right now to prevent anyone from playing inside there. Really nice job. I really like this setup, very creative. I think you're actually gonna hard push into it. I was half expecting them to get some intel and just decide, hey, this looks like it could be a little bit tricky. Maybe it's worth not pushing, but they look like they're gonna dedicate to it. This is going to test it. If this setup holds up, then Elevate will be able to deny this entry pretty effectively, and Kanga are going to be left riddling. Imagine if a year and a half ago you looked at this defensive setup, you wouldn't understand what's going on. The Goyo, the Wamai, and the Mozzie in the mm. castle after his buffs. God Legion finds that opening pick. Where on earth was that, mate? I Middle floor, I'll downstairs, near bench? Was it a run out? Sorry? Yeah, yeah, lobby, lobby door, just popped it down, got the cozy run out, no one watching that, maybe not even using the air jab, it didn't look like he shot an air jab, but might have missed that part. So that's going to be a bit of a dent there for Kanga and the progress, and they still have a lot of admin to clear out, and half the round hmm. played. Yeah, and a bit interesting use of that ash charge from Spruce is through the floor, trying to uh, flush out some of these positions, but and we only have four explosives from Kanga's side, and we have five pieces of utility that you really need explosive to destroy vast is gonna find that kill wayman goes down not a lot of utility that we need gone but another c4 kill campo finally brings things back a little bit but four versus two might be too little too late they really don't have any map control here so i'd be quite surprised if kangaroo are able to get this back they're also quite split so elevate will be able to take these Ooh, nice. picks campo does get a nice shot there though God Legion trades back, which means it is all up to Campo. He's going to have to find three. It would have to be the oh. AC found the first two, but not going to happen. Red's going to make it a nice and clean one. I'm oh, sorry, did you see that ragdoll? That was comical. I yeah. love it. Oh. Uh, no Nomad always it. makes missing one minutes. Oh, you missed it? Oh. Just yeah. in the, in the after, after round kill cam, right at the last split second, there was this comical moment where one of the players ran into a nomad charge and ragdolled it was uh, very very slapstick <laughs> i loved it yeah wow just so many c4 kills and uh yeah really kanga looks pretty all over the place and elevate running amok i honestly feel if i was to have droned out that setup i would just be like nope I think it's going to be better for us to try and make a CEO attack work because need to locate and uh, it looked complicated, it was going to require a lot of utility and a bit of coordination, and for a team like Kanga who have admittedly struggled with stuff like that in the past, they just need to keep it more simple, and everything they tried really just didn't work out. They left them with vulnerabilities, I mean a simple lobby run out for God Legion was as easy as he liked, and stuff like that you just don't want to happen at all. Yeah. And look, you could be using the Nomad charges to protect against something like that. You don't even need a player dedicated to watching it. No, not the case for Kanga. And 
But what your point about just joining out yeah, the admin setup up and saying, okay, no, nah, that's not for me, <laughs> and just attacking the other side. To Kanga's credit, like, there was a pretty good setup on the CEO side as well. There was a castle barricade on that main CEO double door to make it so there's a lot less angles towards long desk that those CEO windows can cut off. But maybe Kanga saw that setup and thought, okay, no, we're not going to touch CEO, let's go admin. But I think that there was definitely a lot of ways they could have dealt with that CEO setup. A thatch EMP to deal with any AESs or my charges, and the ash charge to open up that doorway, the castle barricade, but... No, nonetheless, it's uh, we might not actually get to see that bomb site taken again if Elevate can polish this off in the next two rounds. Very true. See how they go with this one. They are looking for an admin clear across again to get this map control. There are two roamers for Elevate on this top floor. Hango look very set on clearing out one. Meaning it's about to get a bit of a pinch, but no, Spruce. Is gonna say goodbye with the C4. Not looking too good for Kangi here. A lot of pressure on the Gold Legion here in meeting, but he's just gonna drop away safely. And Elevate played that really well. Yeah, honestly, if you're roaming on the top floor on a garage defense and you can find one kill without getting traded, that's. I'm not sure if you heard that very well or if it blew my mic or whatever, but that was like a. That was a clap. <laughs> very good. Elevate, really strong start. Look Word is just going to add to it. Yeah, we got ball clap. Leb does get some kind of trade. Campo, going to try and cut off this rotate, but uh, it's rough. It's a rough look for Kanga. Yeah, but I mean, the pick on Avast is pretty big. It is the maestro, and we made this point when Kanga were defending and they lost their maestro early. It means that if those evil eyes haven't been repositioned before that death, well, then they don't see what they need to see. And of course, they can't be activated either. That could help. Red here in a strong position in bathroom. He's got two ADSs to protect him. Doesn't seem like there's going to be enough utility to be able to clear it out. And they might try and hard push this. Red just going to stay patient. What? Oh, I think he's not there. What is Campo doing? That mute jammer was that? No intel. And oh, it's just falling apart here, Dev, for Kanga. Yeah, well, that's one way to do it. Elevate, do close that out. A nice shot comes from Lev. We get to see this one. Oh. All right, God. All right, God. Okay. He uh, he just clicks heads, I guess. Man, uh, that that wasn't so great for Kanga. Um, and not look, I'm not trying to knock him or anything. That was really well played from Elevate. That first kill from God, and then getting out of dodge, denying the refrag, and then still, I think it was red in bathroom. The misplay from Campo, which is a shame because he's been doing so well tonight, in my view. Yeah, yeah look, that's Campo's uh, definitely been in shining a light. Yeah, it does put us on match point as well, so. Getting a bit worried here for Kanga. It's a long road ahead to drag this to overtime. Attackers need to locate and defuse as many bombs as they can. Definitely considering Elevate's form as well. Four rounds in a row for Kanga, I think, is a very big part, uh, and that's putting it lightly. Uh, they haven't looked really two crash shots so far in their, these attack rounds. It's not giving me much hope. Oh, the scoreboard there. God no, Legion on 12 and 4. Red, 13 and 3. I think that's still the biggest out of my eyes, the 13 and 3 of Red, considering his cafe. And also just more the roles that Red plays as opposed yeah, to God Legion. I mean, God Legion's been on Jaeger, Ash, mm. Sophia, that Five kind of role. Should be getting some frags, you know? Yeah. Red's been playing Nomad and, I mean, Wamai and Mute. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely both of those performances individually and the team play that Elevate's been working off of each other to get these refrags and information supplying to their teammates here. We're going to see a nice camera thrown out by Digital. These factors are all what's putting together the reason why Elevate is currently sitting at five rounds in a row here on Consulate. They can't, could make it a sixth here, and it's almost a full sweep of the whole map, to be honest. So they defend Lobby Press. We haven't seen this one from them yet, but with their form in the last few rounds, they're just going to continue this confidence. Denying drones and pushing back, and denying drones and pushing back. Another drone denied there. Two more come out to help 
The Kanga still only just repelling into admin, and they've already lost at least two drones under this top floor. Wayne Man likely about to lose his next drone. God Legion ready, and there you go. There's another drone taken out. Surely the information is just being falling apart for Kanga. They haven't taken any ground yet. No, definitely nothing meaningful, and they're just persisting constantly with these admin clears. And there's something to be said about that. That that's a really easy pattern to identify. Consulate can be like this. You can see where teams favor to clear across or how they'd like to enter and where they attack and especially teams that still just try the true the tried and tested admin take. It's a massive pattern you can read into. Uh, I feel like Elevate has been very prepared for it. And they've counted it beautifully. I mean we're almost two minutes through and Kanga just haven't had much going and now they've just actually lost that opening pick. It's been so long since we've seen Kanga get an opening pick, and oh man, it looks like Elevate have no intention of losing this top floor. Campo does find one. He managed to flash himself into CEO, and he has refracted out this top floor, which has helped a lot. But three versus four, one minute left, no numbers advantage. That top floor control, but there still could be players downstairs. We've still got a smoke to deny this plant time, and that's Vast. He's going to keep on shooting that one. Getting aggressive here, a bit unnecessary, but Digital's going to find one. Two players left for Kanga. Elevate Attack. on the cusp of making this happen, but Campo, once again, a stellar performer for his team, trying to bring this back into the realm of possibility, and he's the last one standing. Trying to find yet another one. He does get it. Going to have to be the ace here for Campo. Hasn't got much time on the clock either, coming down to the final 15 seconds. seconds. Two big anchor operators to deal with in the dock and the smoke. They're just sitting patiently, long angle there from the dock. We'll finish it off for Elevate. A very clean 2-0 for them in a serious tie against Kanga. Map 1 did take a little bit longer for them to get their game going, but Elevate do come out strong here on Consulate. It really never looked like Kanga had a chance to get back into that game. And well, a flawless round of defenses certainly rounded that out for Elevate. In fact, Kanga Seven. were up at 2-1 at some stage, mm. Dev. And Elevate got six rounds in a row. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Not a single round after the, that, that lobby press room defense successful. 7-3, Seven, 7-2 Seven, on the night for Elevate. Now, that's very, very good. And, Going to propel them up to the standings. A good redemption for their last week's match against LFO, for which they dropped one match, very surprisingly. And look, Elevate, I've got to give them credit where it's due. They look like the team that we've been looking for to pop up this season. We had a lot of expectations. They're coming in as first seed. And finally, they're looking like the team that has got that first seed. Yeah, they really showed some great form in the, those both those maps against Kanga. And some people might say, oh, it was against Kanga though, they've seemed like a bit of a pushover. And I really feel like after how they played against TBD, not so much mm. the case. Like, their cafe against TBD was really good. And when you look at their cafe tonight, Elevate just really shone. So, I think again, Elevate have shown that last week was maybe just a bit of an off week for them. And they've come back pretty strong this week. Yeah, and I've got to say, this game was really fun to watch in terms of keeping your eye on individual heroes. On both of these teams, Leb stood up, and I, I want to reiterate Campo as well, because I did highlight him at the start of the night and say he's a bit less of an experienced player, but I think he certainly earned his stripes in this game, even though they did end up losing it. Uh, and, I mean, talk about the big boys like God Legion and Red. Huge players tonight. Yeah, uh, there's a couple of rounds that I wrote on my spreadsheet here. Red is nuts. Um, <laughs> he really, <laughs> he not just only like accumulated the frags. I don't want to make it sound like it's all just because he was fragging out. It's the impact that those particular frags had. And even the times that they came, that garage round that they just kind of collapsed onto site and seemingly went one out of nowhere, that came off the back of a pick from Red. And then it just started to fall from there. It's plays like that that just really enabled to elevate, to move through some of those trickier parts of the round. And it just felt like he was constantly the one when there was a stall point or a moment that somebody needed to step up. It seemed like he was always the one getting the pick. Yeah, and Elevate has certainly seemed to be returning to form. Let's have a chat to Digital from their team about this match. Guys, hey, we... Dig. <laughs> Going fantastic, mate. You look pretty pumped after that game. How's it feel? Oh, it feels awesome. Like last week, 
we were a bit disappointed. Um, I think we could definitely pull away with a 2-0. Um, respect to LFO, but yeah, this week we were guns blazing. We weren't gonna ta- we weren't gonna lose this week. We weren't taking a loss for an answer. So yeah, that's uh, good to get a win. Yeah, it really looked like you guys were just coming out all guns blazing this week. Uh, tell us about how the adjustments been between last week and this week. Obviously, you said you were quite disappointed with how that went. Maybe talk us through some of the things that you guys have worked on to bring out this performance. Um, I think last week we were a bit surprised uh, during the veto. Um, so this week. Um, we were definitely accounting for a lot more possible maps that could come our way um, and being a lot more prepared. I think last week we sort of read off um, maybe a possibility of club and uh, it cost us in the end. So no, today, uh, this week we were definitely uh, prepared on a lot more maps. Um, uh, yeah, and thank for that. And thankfully for that, we were able to pull up with uh, two work. Uh, yeah, credit to yourselves, to Cynix and Warturtle as well, your support staff for making that happen. Really good adaptation from week to week. Mm-hmm. And you guys have really bounced back. I know a lot of people are coming into this season expecting you guys to be at the top, maybe at second place, really giving Wildcard a serious fight for their money. How do you feel like you're tracking so far off that little blip that was week one? And how do you feel going into the rest of the weeks? Um, yeah, like, as I said, like week one was just, I think, uh, um, a bump in the road. I think we definitely um, rate ourselves and believe we are, you know, top two team, if not like the best team in our region. So um, I think, uh, yeah, we're tracking. We're definitely tracking for um, our top two, even though we only need top four. But no, top two, um, we're always like aiming and striving for that, for that um, top two placement. Perfect. So you guys have been picked up by Elevate for a little while now. They've really been helping you guys out. I'm sure that there's a lot of fans that have come with that and with your performances so far in the Pro League and in Six Masters. Anything you want to say to the fans out there? Um, like, as always, cheers for the support. Um, if we have any fans uh, and <laughs> they're just getting in chat um, and just cheering us on um, and uh, seeking by us, yeah. And thanks to Elevate as well. They're, um, they're a huge help. Uh, and believing in our in our game and in um and what we have uh what we have yeah so just cheers for that perfect mate well well played tonight we'll see you next week cheers lads thank you he really was pumped wasn't he really really <laughs> keen for yeah. that yeah yeah he's a pretty high energy dude like if you ever hang out with Fidge and voice chatter in a game like he's always up and about and so especially after that win i was <laughs> expecting him to be not really able to sit still and pretty positive. <laughs> um, and yeah, look, I think they they had a really strong match. There's no doubt that they should be pumped up about that because it's always the case when you feel like you've underperformed, it does create a little bit of extra pressure and this want to just overcompensate, I guess, and to come out with such a strong win, it feels fantastic. And while that might be a, another win under their belt, I don't think it's going to get easier anytime soon. Next week, they're playing Sinister, who we know have been really at the top of their game they've got their former player Vinny over on that team as well so i don't know do we have we want to kind of pretense anything going on in that game sinister versus elevate next week mm, that's going to be a great matchup because sinister have really been rising to form and we have started to question they still need to come out and beat some of these big teams and they had a really close series against wildcard in week one so now they've got another chance here at a top two team it's going to be elevate next week and I think it's going to be tough, but if Elevate can come out and play their game, I still feel like Elevate's got the edge. Well, that's definitely where Elevate's going to be looking forward to for next week. I'm sure they're hyped up for that game, as Dij definitely was in that interview. But let's talk about Kanga for a minute here. That wasn't great. I mean, they won five rounds on the series. They did a lot better last week, even though they didn't manage to edge out that round. I mean, what what is it for, for Kanga that we're, we're, we really need to be talking about right now? I think just maybe... I feel like they need to really master some maps because we talked a lot about uh, before the show started and even as we we're doing some conjecture with the veto, there's no real standout strength map there for Kanga. They've played a lot of maps a lot, but as you were saying, there's none that really have that outstanding performance, which most teams usually have. So I think they're really struggling from a, a really shallow map pool. Yeah, well, let's have some fun here in our second interview tonight. We got all mate Spruce. Bring him up. G'day, James. How are we tonight? I'm um, good, James. Well, mediocre, <laughs> but yeah. Mediocre. Yeah, no, that was a tough game. Exemplary performance from yourself. Uh, we, we also highlighted Leb and Campo. Did really well that game. I mean, how do you feel 
that went overall what were the things that, that were running through your mind during that game uh yeah i wouldn't say i played that well um it doesn't really yeah i'd say probably it was more a teamwork than more so individual performances which was hurting us it doesn't matter if you can get sick frags if you can't work together as a team you may as well just go play hockey or something like that i don't know actually that is a team sport my apologies hockey players <laughs> <laughs> I forgot yes, that mate. you play hockey, don't you, James? <laughs> yeah, I oh, used to play hockey. <laughs> so you did, actually. <laughs> but yeah, it was just once more. It just came down to teamwork again. Um, and we just seem to um, poo the bed when it comes to officials. I'm not sure. I keep on bringing up experience, but it's not really. You can't keep using that as an excuse, per se. Um, so yeah, just need to get good. <laughs> Don't know what else to say. The thing, the thing I want to ask actually is, uh, Consulate was your map pick, and you guys seemed like you really struggled a lot on that. Was there something in particular that wasn't going how you were planning, or can you maybe give um, some insight on what was I happening with Consulate? They, they did a lot of good counter strutting. Um, I think, uh, even though we played Consulate pretty badly last time, and we brought the Thatcher Raven. I, I hope you were happy to see that. <laughs> Yeah, I was happy. Um, yeah, that's good. Uh, didn't seem to save us at all since we got flawless on the day. But... <laughs> uh, yeah, it was. I as you, I think you were saying before, like we have a you can't have a shallow map pool when you haven't won a map at all. So <laughs> you don't. You, we don't even have a map pool. So. <laughs> Oh, you poor thing, mate. I know it's it's tough, and I think a lot of people are wondering, like, and I, I know yourselves are wondering. You guys are just waiting for that break where you can break through and like get that one map win. We talked about the map pool kind of needs to be fleshed out a bit. You guys have got knights next week. You think maybe you'll have a better chance against them, or is there any particular game that you're really looking to and expecting? Hopefully, that can be a breakout match. Oh, any game, mate. <laughs> we versed uh, two and three on pro league so far. Um, Fnatic are apparently moving to Berlin, according to Reddit. Don't listen to Reddit, guys. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, we've first two of the top four teams so far. So maybe we'll have some better luck on the teams who are crap like us. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cheers for that comment, mate. Well, anything you want to say to your fans out there? Uh, after um, I love you all. Um, uh, that's all. <laughs> that's not much all else right, to say. Not much. I wish there's hope well, for you guys. I really do. <laughs> well, they love you too, Spruce. Thanks for the interview and chin up, mate. I know you guys are going to come back stronger. We'll catch you next week. Good kiss and little help. <laughs> DM me later. <laughs> Bit of James uh, on James action. <laughs> yeah, some classic Spruce there. And uh, yeah, I mean, they seem pretty. He seemed pretty hard on himself. And uh, they seem hard on themselves in general, um, lacking some teamwork, he said. And yeah, again, their map pool is just feeling like it's not allowing them to build on towards a bit of like a victory or any kind of momentum because it just feels like they haven't, yeah, like mastered any particular map they can just steam onto. Yeah, and I mean, even if you just have those two maps that you can really feel comfortable mm. on, right? The opponent only gets one ban. So you can guarantee you will play one of two maps every week just start there i maybe that's somewhere to start who knows it's a tough look for kanga on the outlook but we do have another exciting game coming up wild card versus ferox it's another david and goliath matchup of two old guard teams with some roster changes that's coming to you guys in just a minute don't go anywhere <laughs> 